Yeah, that they have. Kuzmansi is the fourth round, 108th overall selection in the NHL entry draft by the Calgary Flames just this past year in 2018. So certainly has come into college with a lot of hype. And so far, at least playing for ASU, he has really lived up to it. Yeah, absolutely. He's a Minnesota kid, played high school hockey in Minnesota. So many great NHL players have come out of that system, one of the best in the United States. And you can really see why Calgary wanted this kid. Uh, when you look at him play, his game is perfectly suited for the style that Bill Peters runs. He loves those smaller, speedier forwards like the Johnny Goudreau, Sean Monahan, Elias Lindholm mold. He fits that perfectly. And if he ever finds himself playing at the Saddle Dome one day, he'll fit right in. Certainly will. Now we come to a face-off. Between number 10, that's Bush, and number 21 for Omaha. Slap shot by Brinson Pashnuk. Stifled by Weninger. Pash along the boards, and that's going to go back to Kuzmansis. Kuzmansis circling with it. Plenty of time to get off a good shot here. A one-timer over to Walker. Walker again. What a shot. It goes right past Weninger. Didn't get a lot of height on it, but it finds an empty net and make that four goals for Walker having an absolutely dominant night. That's his eighth of the season. That'll put him in the NCAA lead for goals so far this year. And at some point, you have to wonder if there's going to be a goalie change, and that certainly looks to be the case. Matei Tomek now entering the net for Nebraska Omaha. Weninger's night is done. He finishes with 14 saves on 21 shots, a 6.67 save percentage. Of course, did not get a lot of help tonight, but that's an ugly one for any goaltender. It is, and Walker really, Weninger's kryptonite, scoring four, four of ASU's seven goals tonight. Huge for the man who is home, home raised here in Phoenix, Arizona. And also five power play goals so far for the Sun Devils. We stress the importance of staying out of the penalty box for both sides. We, we can't overstate it, and it's really killed Omaha in this game. Without those five power play goals, this game is knotted up at two, and they really just have had an extraordinarily hard time staying out of the penalty box, and that's something that they're gonna need to work on moving forward. Absolutely. Wilson taking the puck now. Pulls a nice move, and Bukta for Yuno is going to get it. Bukta trying to settle it down and slaps it across the boards, and it's gonna find its way all the way down to Joey Decourt. Only eight seconds remaining in the penalties to Polkanen and Maniscalco, so this is gonna be a standard five on four power play starting right about now. Both those guys out of the box. Maniscalco out of the box with Polkanen. Polkanen with Bukta on the floor. Polkanen going to get the puck now, hopefully to clear it for Omaha again. But no, it pops out to Stridesburg for ASU. It takes a shot, but Tomek sends it away. Tomek a much bigger goaltender than Weninger is, and that might be just what the Mavericks need. A lot of these goals from ASU have been going into the corners of the net when the goaltender's been out of position, and Weninger really just did not have the range to stop a lot of those shots. Tomek, of course, quite a bit taller, able to cover a little bit more net. That could conceivably end up helping Nebraska Omaha here. Sandu now. Leaves it for Stridesburg. Stridesburg sends it back to Sandu. Can't handle the puck. And that's going to be poked away. Now Alfred has it. Alfred with a couple of deep moves and gets around. He brings it deep into Sun Devil territory, but he loses it. And now Maniscalco is going to survey behind the net. Yeah, and ASU really in no hurry to score here. 13 minutes left, minus a few ticks. They're up five goals. Really... This game is out of reach for Nebraska Omaha, barring something miraculous. And really, the only mission here for ASU is to finish this one off, play some good hockey, make sure nobody gets hurt, and move on to the next series. Yeah, we see number 20, Philip Buncis. Buncis getting his first ice time here. Definitely has to correspond with the score, but Buncis gets a shot, and it's blocked by Tomek. Good screen there in front by Holman. Must have been very hard for Matei Tomek to read that puck. Able to make the save regardless. Puck carried up the boards now. Ward gives it up to Polkanen. Polkanen slips and falls. 
can't seem to get a handle on it. And again, the puck is cleared out of the zone. We mentioned Nebraska Omaha has had a hard time keeping the puck in ASU zone tonight. That is a major reason why they've only managed to generate 21 shots against Joey Decord. He saved 19 of them. Another fantastic start for him. You see Permu, and a nice move there from Keck, but it's taken away. Chase. Taken away by Garcia. Garcia gets the puck back. Oh, but it goes right off his stick. And now Premu skating through the neutral zone and is stolen away by Pashnuk. Steen Pashnuk now just dumps it in, hoping for his other offensers to get to the puck. And Clifford gets to it, looking for Stridesburg, but he sends it over to Wilson instead. Now Pashnuk flips it on, neck, on net, but Tomek sends it away. Garcia gets a shot on goal, and finally Tomek is able to cover it up to stop an eighth ASU goal. We still sit at seven to two. Good shift there by Chase Primo. Hasn't gotten a lot of ice time tonight. Played a little bit more last night. He's not a guy who's going to give you a whole lot of scoring, but he's a big body out there, very physical presence, and he's got a hockey pedigree. His father, Keith Primo, played many years in the NHL for the Philadelphia Flyers, among others, and his uncle Wayne Primo also spent some time in the NHL with Hartford and Toronto. So he's got that hockey DNA. The hockey sense is there, and he's a great physical presence. Great for killing penalties and great for stopping shots, which he did right there. Yeah, and certainly somebody who's going to have to take the reins in a couple of years for University uh, Nebraska Omaha, considering that he is only a freshman and a lot of this Maverick roster is composed of juniors and seniors. Yeah, Primo obviously will get more ice time uh, as time goes on, but really just making the most of what he's been given here tonight. Uh, I'm impressed so far. And really, it's guys like that that you need at this stage of the game just to stop the bleeding, making sure that they can keep this a five-goal game, maybe even put some more on the board. But realistically, this game probably out of reach for Nebraska-Omaha. They just got to make sure that they go back home to Nebraska with their heads held high and make sure they can control the damage right here. We're going to have a face-off in the Maverick zone. Kuzmansi's not able to win it, but tries to run after it but it's taken away by the Mavericks. Now skating up with it is Jones. Jones gives it up to Stewart. Stewart pushing it here. It seems the UNO defenders are starting to get a little more aggressive. Sandu gets it along the boards and he gives it up to Kuzmansis. Kuzmansis skating through the zone. Pretty fast, he gets, he gets behind Jones pretty quickly. And another sequence there where UNO was not able to maintain possession of the puck in the ASU zone. No shots generated off of that rush and ASU now knocking on the door again. Sandhu, a wraparound one, and it was right off of, it was right out of touch for Lemieux, but Lemieux could have had an easy one-timer goal there, but he just missed it. And now the puck is in the Sun Devil zone. Spinner gets it, Steven Spinner, and he shoots one, but to Cord, a pad save. 